Terror in the Sky is a direct sequel to the show's first episode, On Leather Wings. It features the third appearance of Kirk Langstrom and the return of the Man Bat. Well, sort of. This installment of the series is based on a comic storyline from the early 1970s, and several aspects of it were changed in the adaptation from print to screen. The Man Bat is back. Attacking cargo ships at the docks and eating their crated fruit, it gets the attention of the police and, in turn, the Dark Knight himself. Batman thinks Kirk Langstrom is to blame once again for these new reports and confronts him at his lab. Langstrom has suspected himself as well, but has no memory of his new transformations. He bounces the blame back at Batman for his antidote apparently not working, as he's been trying to create one himself. Batman then takes a DNA sample to test, hoping to see what the truth of the matter actually is. Later, he has a run with the creature and compares its DNA with Langstrom's. When they don't match, it leads Batman to ask who or what this new bat creature really is. As mentioned earlier, Terror in the Sky was based on a comic book storyline in Detective Comics number 429 titled Man Bat Over Vegas. The 1972 issue was written, penciled, and inked by Man Bat co-creator Frank Robbins. This episode doesn't take place in Las Vegas, but it does seemingly stick to the basics of that original story. Bringing the Man Bat character back was a welcomed choice from the production team. Unfortunately, this was the last appearance of some version of that character in this series. Kirk Langstrom's scene in Tiger Tiger could lead one to believe he'd be a regular ally of Batman when dealing with human-animal hybrids, but that didn't turn out to be the case. This would be his final depiction on the show until a little background cameo in Chemistry, an episode of the new Batman Adventures. Although, his legacy did live on past this. His research is used in the Justice League Unlimited episode, The Doomsday Sanction, and there's a nice little tribute to Man Bat's first appearance in On Leather Wings in the JLU episode, Epilogue. This one does have a bit of a reveal for who the new Bat creature is, so this is your spoiler warning in case you want to check it out for yourself. Dr. March, Langstrom's father-in-law, has recently recreated the Bat mutagen. He says he's been working in secret to refine it. I still believe only a creature like a man bat can survive the next evolutionary cataclysm. While interrogating him as a suspect, Batman discovers March never took the mutagen himself, but his daughter, Francine, was accidentally infected when cleaning up a shattered beaker containing the new serum. Since Man Bat's reappearance, she thinks Kirk has fallen back into old habits and leaves him. After Batman cleared his name, Kirk chased after her and was able to get on the same flight she was leaving town on. He tells her of Batman's news that there's proof he's not the re-emerged Man Bat, but soon, Francine starts feeling ill and transforms into the Bat creature while enclosed in the plane thousands of feet in the air. She forces an escape that puts the other passengers' lives in danger until Batman shows up in the Bat plane to reseal the door. The transformed Francine abducts Kirk and flies above Gotham with the Dark Knight in pursuit. This leads to Batman shooting her with the antidote, and she eventually transforms back into her normal state. Disoriented, she falls off the bridge tower they're on, but is saved by Kirk as Batman helps her back on the platform. The couple embraces as the episode wraps up. I like the twist of Francine being the unwilling villain of this story. Her relationship with Kirk honestly ends up being pretty sweet as we see them go through another crisis together. I just found myself rooting for them as the episode progressed. Kirk being the one to save Francine from falling in the climax was a really nice moment too. Building on the background of On Leather Wings as our setup, this all played out believably and made for a decent episode. It's not really on the level of On Leather Wings, and the transformation effects were done much better in other episodes, but this wasn't a bad follow-up. There's not much more to say about it. It's far from an essential episode, but if you were invested in the Man Bat's first appearance, you'll probably get something out of this sequel. As for the next installment of this series, I'll likely have a little more to say. See you then. The nightmare's finally over.